Hey everyone, it's Amateur, and I wanted to share with you guys a little envelope creation, mini envelope creation that I made for a swap that I'm in. It's just a small swap with a few amazing ladies from the group that I'm in there to host several of the hops that I've been in the past. They were the ones that were all in the Latinos Gotta Represent YouTube hop, and I will get all of their links and put them here in the description so you guys can go check out their videos. They have already posted their videos of these envelopes and basically i don't even remember how it came about it was they were talking about the little mini envelope um video that bona has and if i can find that video i will also link it here on how you can make mini envelopes with your uh envelope punch and out of the six by six uh, papers so i was too lazy to bring out the envelope punch but i did have a um a doll that I use. So I'm going to show you guys everything that I used. First, let me show you my project. I actually dug into my Tilda, and if you guys know, and it's not the um, the Magnolia Tilda, it's the Tone fin Finic Finic. Uh, I totally forgot name right now. <laughs> it's the Tilda that is unfortunately now all retired. So these ladies have been actually super super kind to me and super amazing. And I just wanted to show my appreciation. And I was a little behind of everybody getting theirs done. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to dig into my special papers, into the Tilda Horde vault that is guarded by now two dragons. Because I had one and there were plots to come and liberate my Tilda, <laughs> my Tilda papers. So I have to get another dragon for them to, to, to guard my Tilda paper. But I used several of the collections. The two main ones that I used for the actual envelopes were these. And these are some of the newer ones. Spring Diaries and Pardon My Garden. And this is the Tilda brand. And unfortunately, these have all been now retired. Um, if you are interested, I know that sometimes... Um, there, uh, If you check my videos, there is a video. And I will try to link it in here. Um of a I'm trying I'm so sorry I'm trying to remember that I, I haven't had enough coffee crafty me is a shop on Facebook you guys and I will try to find the link and I will put it here she does have sales and on occasion she does have the rarest of the rare tilde papers that you will ever find like seriously you cannot find these anywhere and she gets them and they search high and low and sometimes they're able to find them so of course i will put a link into this description it's a group and she does sales and they have but not just tilda stuff she has amazing 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 things and and she has a shop but they ha she has sales on there so i will look for that and put it in the description for you guys so uh, let me show you guys what i did i made these and this is actually a tilda stamp as well this is a very old tilda stamp let me bring it up here here it come they come packaged like this i have a few of them they were sent from a sweet 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 friend from europe a while back and these have been literally in under lock and key now i used i wanted to try because they've said that this one is really good that my favorite things ink is really good for copic coloring it is but it also stains your stamps horribly now and i understand they're safe they're fine you can still restamp them i personally do not like the way this looks um, I just don't like it. I don't like it, and I don't like to use really, really harsh chemicals on my stamps to clean them off, so I just wipe them down as much as I could. But I digress. And these are really rare. By the way, those stamps are, like, super rare. And these are the papers that, I mean, the stamps that go with, uh, let me see, I have it right here on the side. If I'm not mistaken, these were basically meant to go with, like, this Seaside collection. And I used some of the papers for this. But um, I use a variety of papers in from my stash, and I'm, have, I'm like have a little mess over here. And I'm gonna show. I'm gonna have a full process on how I did um did these because I have the last one that I'm going to make. I'm gonna show you guys. Now let me see what else did I use. So they were all Copic colored, all of it. It was Copic colored, and then the dress, the little swimsuit, was actually then stamped on a different on a different pattern and I also used some W0 and W1 here just to kind of give it a little bit of shading and I just stamped it out of some scraps of papers that I had that I felt that would make really cute uh, vintage swimsuit prints and then on top of that on the little stripes as you can see here some of these show off better in the little lines instead of trying to cut little papers I went ahead and used this jelly pen this is the jelly roll by 
I don't know, it's j Jelly Roll. <laughs> um, I have several, but this is the only one that actually really worked. Like, the other ones kind of, I basically threw them away. So they all have that little fine line where they have it filled in in white. Because of the pattern, I wanted, I wanted it to show up a little more. And uh, the I painted each, I colored each one of the castles. And then what I did though was I did color assembly line style. I went ahead and I stamped it all, and I will try to have some pictures here. I stamped it all here. I'll, this is basically what it looks like. I stamped it all on a half sheet of paper. This is heavyweight uh, cream cardstock, and then I colored the set the sets of colors as I would go. I had the entire stack, so when I was doing all the teals and aquas, I would do it on every single one, then start over with the pinks and corals, then start over with the sand castle, etc., etc. So I would because there's touches of each of the colors throughout the whole thing, and when I was doing the skin tones, I did all of the skin tones, etc., etc. And that's how I did all of them. Now, on the back, it has a little, this is actually some also tilde um, ribbon that I cut up in little sections with my pinking shears and they then put little pins. These are also tilde pins. These are decorated heart pins by tilde. Like I said, all of this stuff is retired. I think in some European shops you can still find um, some of the items and also some of the fabrics because they retired the scrapbook and the papers, uh, the scrapbook papers and stuff first. And here, okay, so since, and it was already stamped on the card and then I just cut it out. I had to fussy cut all of these, all of the little um, sand castles and then also all of the little seashells. But I wanted to have like a few little accents for each one of them. And as I talk, as I babble on, I will go ahead and show you different ones. But they're basically layered and they're also layered on foam mount. In the back, like I said, each one of them will have this uh, ribbon, which I put on with foam tape and then a heart pin. I also punched out little hearts and put foam right here because I stabbed myself with the first one. So I'm like, you know what? I don't want these sweet ladies to get stabbed by <laughs> this paper. And okay, so this plaque, it's um, so the tutorial has like a little card with a sentiment, and basically, what it's meant, it's meant for because it is it is open in, in the actual envelope, you can actually put a gift card and stuff like that. These are these are basically envelopes with a little message, but it looks like it's coming out, and you're able to put gift cards or anything you want here. I'm going to try to fill it in with goodies and uh, to to show it off here. Now, this is a die from Paper Training. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite Paper Training die. I wish they made these dies to fill in the spaces because I would buy them. And I think these are stacks, Matt stacks four or something like that. But these are, these come individually and I had to use these and I went ahead and used the two smaller ones one with the ivory cardstock that I used for, basically I try to use the same kind of uh, papers. This was to use for the ivory cardstock for the base. And then the other pattern paper, and all of this is tilde paper. All of it, it's all the paper I've used is tilde paper except for the cream cardstock and the black for the Ola because I wanted the sentiment to stand out. And then with the extra pieces of paper, I went ahead and cut the inside to give it a nice little background. And those are from Paper Tray Ink. And then the Ola, I'm trying to pick ones that I haven't shown you guys. The Ola is actually from this die. This is Sizzix Thinlets by Luisa Elena Guillen. Um, these, uh, I got this from Hobby Lobby when they were having, when they were clearancing out their last bit of stuff. They had several of them in Spanish that I wish I would have gotten, but I didn't know that they were clearancing them out at the moment. But I was able to snag these. But you can find them online. These haven't been retired. I just got them on clearance at Hobby Lobby. And this one, oh my goodness. Like, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. And here is the, like I said, each one of them has, and you can see the envelope right here. And this is the pocket for all of them. So I have the last one that I'm going to assemble. And I think I've shown them all and I will have a pictures also. Let me see. Let me put these aside. And let me go ahead and I have most everything prepared for, oh, yes, the, the actual envelope. This is another die from Paper Tray Ink. Now, I got this last year in one of their kits. If I'm not mistaken, it was one of the um, the mail kits, the postage. 
kit that they had, but they also have this one separate. And the neat thing is it creates an envelope card, an envelope, and you can have, it'll fit a gift card inside. So it'll fit a gift card perfectly inside. And that is why I decided to use the die and, and be lazy, <laughs> as opposed to making the actual envelopes. Now it already comes scored and I'm going to use this side. And you just go ahead and hopefully this video isn't too long. And if it is, I will just have to forward it. And of course I use my Scotch Techie Glue and these tips again, these are the um, Scrap Perfect, Scrap Perfect uh, No Clog glue caps for the two ounce bottles. Now I also have, oh, I found it, okay. So I did buy this glue last time that I was at a craft store and this is the art glitter. I've never used this, so I wanted to try and these fit perfectly on here. So basically I did not have to, I think this is the large one. I did not have to um, pour this glue. You know those little tiny bottles with the little pin on the side? That's garbage, I, I can't, I, I totally can't just sit there and try to get the glue in there because I've tried and all I've done was made a mess. So I like to order those tips and I've had the one on this one for like two years. And I mean, not the glue, I place, replaced the glue bottle several times, but the actual lid I've had for like two years. So, and you just take off the tip that it comes with and you go ahead and use it. Okay, so see, look at that. Easy peasy, and like I said, this is this envelope die from Paper Train Ink. Now uh, we are going to, so the stamp I had already colored, it's just basic coloring and I already layered. Like I said, I stamped again on this pattern that looks like a, would be a vintage swimsuit. And then I went ahead and just a little bit of W0 and W1 to give it a little bit of shading under her, uh, where like the flaps of the fabric would be. Everything was completely colored with my Copics. And this is... I always have a difficult time, like which one to use, you know? Which one to use? But we'll go ahead and go with, I don't know. We'll do this one. All right. And then I, and see, but look how fine. And what I like about this glue, these glue caps is the glue cap actually has the little metal tip inside. Because I have tried those little bottles with the pins. It was a horror trying to get the glue inside. It was a horror, like a true horror show. And this has the little thing that just goes right in there and closes it up. Okay. Now, what I learned is you have to be very careful because now I have to figure out where that's going to go. Let me put the Ola. And I went ahead and I cut these from Heavyweight Black Cardstock because it's easier when you're doing something small. And since some of the edges were going to hang off, I need it to be very sturdy. And see, it's super easy with this tip. Like seriously, like, uh, I love it. And just set it. Now the thing is that like these little curly things come out farther, but I wanted to have the sentiment almost centered. So it looks a little bit centered. Okay. Now, since the girl is bigger, I've been doing, and this is how I've been like, just kind of measuring out to see where it's going to go. There we go. And then I just hold it. And then I will squeeze a little bit of glue in here. Squeeze a little bit of glue in there. And hold it down. Now there is a space here where it looks like it's coming out, but that'll be fine because it'll be mostly covered with the Tilda Stamps um, bag, beach bag. Do, do, do. Okay. All right, so now that we've done that, it is on to the mounting fan. I just used the three, oh, that's a little bit dangerous. <laughs> Maybe my craft room is haunted from the gingerbread man that I assassinated. 
and if you guys haven't seen that video please i am having the funnest time with like all of the responses that i'm getting from everybody it, it was it was funny it was just it was just crazy okay so and i know i'm using a lot of foam but i want these to stay they are going to travel and then they're going to travel to from the person that's distributing them for us I think that's how I had it. So there's that. And now the sand castle. And I really have to continue to get some more practice with my Copic markers. Because I really want to get way, way, way better. Okay. And let's see. So that is, those are the two major items. And then I also cut, colored and stamp a set of three. There was more seashells to this collection, but I just wanted to keep it to a few of them. Okay. And at this point, I just started layering them, just literally where they went. Now this one, since I tend to have this one on this side because of this teal aqua colors. I kind of wanted to spread it around. And then the seashell, I typically just kind of stuck in here. If I learn, remember how to use mounting foam here. Okay. And this one. I kind of put it in front of the girl on most of them because I felt that was just like a cool little accent right there to kind of break up the pattern. And that is the envelope. And here I just went ahead and like I said, I cut this ribbon with my pinking shears a little A little heart pin there hopefully I'm in frame and uh, just flipped it over adhered that and like I said I punched out little hearts to go here I punched out from just like some scraps and stuff and a little bit of mounting foam on these to put under the actual pin so nobody gets hurt because like I said I did of course I did of course I would right and there it is and there we go uh this was a little bit faster <laughs> I did have everything ready for me to put together but I did Basically, that's what I did for all of them. I created every um every I I item, every icon, every little uh, sheet here, and then it's ready for some giddies inside. I created, I colored all of the images. I cut out all the envelopes at one time, one one thing at a time, which makes it much easier for me. And then I'm able to actually assemble the whole thing, assemble them all at the end so it makes it much easier because you break down your tasks basically and this was a lot more task a lot more tedious than i thought it was going to be i'm like oh i'll just throw them together but when i decided to do all of the coloring and all of the layering i was just going to color the 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 stamp stress but then i'm like you know it'd be really cool if i use the tilted pattern papers also so there it is that's one of my to the projects that I have done this year because I have not dug into my stash and maybe I can find the courage to create another project because I have, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I have hoarded it, but I absolutely love it. It has a vintage feel, it has a more modern feel if you want because of these newer collections. Like I said, if you can find them, I will look for Esme's, um, Esme's shop link and I will put it in the description. Like I said, it is a Facebook group and, it's not, and she has a store that she does, she runs sales with awesome, awesome, awesome creations. You guys have to go check it out. And also check out the other ladies' videos that um, 
I will put in a link of all of the other people that are also in this group to do this little swap. It was super cool. It was, I feel like it was a lot of work because I was wanting to be very detailed, but it was super easy. These envelopes are super easy to make. I mean, especially for me because I was lazy and I used to dye. I know I'm not, I'm bad. But I absolutely love it and I want to use my dyes more make because some of them were not cheap. So you want to get your get your use out of it. And this is a little this one's actually my sample one, I think. The first one that I made. I'm not sure. But I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you guys think and I will talk to you guys soon. And sorry for the long video, but I wanted to show you guys the full process of how I put them together. So thank you guys for stopping by and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye everyone.